Hi, I'm Lou from Dividends Dog. Welcome to the channel. Here we talk about stocks uh, with an emphasis on dividends paying stocks. So if that's your kind of thing, uh, consider subscribing. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at a company called Edgewell Personal Care Company. And to go over a little bit of an overview on this, um, Edgewell, they make personal care products. Uh, they define that as uh, different categories, uh, wet shave, uh, the sun slash skin care, grooming, and feminine care. Uh, they've got a lot of actually pretty well-known brands uh, such as Chic, uh, Banana Boat, Hawaiian Tropic, Playtex, Wet Ones, Carefree, and a lot of other ones. So let's go over a little bit of a history of this company. Uh, they were incorporated back in 1999, and back then they were they were a subsidiary of Ralston Purina Company. Some of you might remember they were a big pet food slash animal feed company. And then in the year 2000, all of the shares were distributed uh, to those shareholders, and it became an independent, publicly traded company. In 2003. They acquired the Schick Wilkinson sword business from Pfizer. Uh, 2007, they acquired Playtex products. Uh, so they had brands such as Playtex, uh, Wet Ones, Banana Boat, Hawaiian Tropic, Sun Care. And in 2009, uh, they completed another acquisition. They acquired Edge and Skintimid shave preparation brands that was from sc johnson and son uh, other acquisitions in 2010 they acquired the american safety razor uh, that was a big producer of private label uh, razors and value-based razors and then we go to 2013 where they acquired the stay free pad uh, Carefree Liner, OB Tampon, Feminine Hydrine Brands uh, in the U.S., Canada, and the Caribbean. Uh, that they bought from Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the company was actually known as Energizer, Energizer Holdings. Yeah, that's the battery company. Uh, but then in 2015, what they did is they actually spun off the Energizer battery business. So that became Energizer. So this, this spun out company became New Energizer. And at this point, the company changed their name from Energizer to Edgewell Personal Care Company. And now they would, what they would do without the Energizer battery business, they would just focus on the personal care segments. Uh, 2019, they tried to make a large acquisition by buying out uh, Harry's. Harry's is another uh, razor company, and uh, the Federal Trade Commission didn't like that. Uh, they sued, and they, basically that that was the end of that deal. But they were gonna they were gonna buy Harry's for 1.3 billion dollars, uh, but that ended up falling through. So that's how we get to the the current state and how the company came to be what it is today. Uh, if we look at, for a minute, the revenue, the earnings, uh, what we see is we really have to go back to where they spun out their battery business in 2015. Uh, we really need to take a real look at uh, from 2016 onward to see how this business has been performing. And uh, business has not been that great without the battery business. Uh, overall, we can see the earnings uh, per share, they've gone up, they've gone down, you know, they, it sort of bounces around. There's not, um, there's not a whole lot of consistency, although it's profitable. Um, back, back when it was, it had the Energizer business attached, it paid dividends, and then it stopped after the spinoff. So in 2021, it began to pay a dividends again. Uh, what they did is they initiated 15 cents per quarter per share. That works out to 60 cents annually. 
and uh, this dividend rate, it's, it's about 15% of the earnings that they're paying out. Uh, their total debt is $1.4 billion against their 2021 earnings of about $166 million. So that, that seems concerning to me, that kind of debt load. So this, this business, it does have some, some pros going for it. Uh, the, in, the industry, as an industry, seems like, you know, it's, it's a good industry to be in. Um, you know, the first thing I think of when I think of this kind of an industry, personal care brands, you know, P&G comes to mind, Procter & Gamble, I think of Unilever, Colgate. I mean, a lot of these companies, they've, you know, they've literally made a fortune out of these, these key categories that Edgewell plays in. Uh, the second thing is the dividends. It's great that they restarted the dividends. It's uh, after five years of not paying one. Uh, it's not It's not a very big one, you know, the 60 cents. Uh, right now, the stock price is about $42 a share. Uh, you know, that works out to be a, about a dividend yield of about 1.4. So nothing really to write home about, but you know, it's better that they're paying than not paying. And it's, so it's, it's in a good industry. It has some well-known brands uh, in shaving, grooming, skincare. Uh, it's restarted, it's dividends. So that's the, those are basically the good things that, that come to mind that I can say about it. Uh, but there are risks. Unfortunately though, there's, there's a lot of risks uh, with this particular company. I think that um, the first one is the dividend itself. I mean, can you really trust the dividends? I mean, we're talking, you know, they went five years without paying one. Um, they bring it back, it's a small dividends. You know, you can look at, well, you know, how much their earnings per share are versus the amount they're paying dividends. I mean, they're only paying out about 15%. So that's, that's pretty good. I mean, that means the dividend should be safe. Uh, I, I think I think the worry is though really how committed they are to the dividends. You know, if they can stop the dividend for five years, you know, I, I don't view it it really as safe, even though they brought it back. Uh, the EPS, the earnings per share, it's it's not a stable. I mean, you know, you look at it, it's it's up and then it's down and it's up and then it's down a little and up a little and then down and. I mean, earnings are sort of all over the place. So it's not, it's not really a stable income generator. Uh, that debt of the 1.4 billion total debt is worrisome. You know, they, yeah, they made in 2021, they made $166 million. Um, some of the estimates I see going forward might be, you know, less earnings in the quarters to come. Uh, I, I see that in 2022, uh, they earned 42 cents in the first quarter. Uh, they earned 50 cents in the second quarter, uh, that both of which are lower than last year's. So we really can't, we really can't, we really can't, we can't bet too heavily that that earning level is gonna be enough to service their debt that they have, let alone pay the dividends. Um, looking at who their big customers are, one company, Walmart, accounted for 21% of the 2021 revenue. And uh, they go on to say, it's interesting if you read the 10Ks, it goes on to say how, you know, no other company accounted for more than 10% of revenue. So there's this one big company, Walmart, that's 21% of their business. And then we look at, um, then they go on to further spell it out that uh, they say that Target uh, represents about 11% of the net sales for the sun and skincare segments and 10% for feminine care. So they, they further say the 11% of sun care and skin care and 10% for feminine care uh, is coming from Target. So it's interesting uh, that they bring this up. That's an issue what segments are actually bringing in the money uh, looking at this, the way I figure here, calculating this out, I mean, what they say is wet shave, which is the razors, 
brings in 58% of revenue and 62% of their segment profits. So it's really this company, even though yeah, they've got all these brands and they've got all these different categories, it's one big bet on their razor business. Which, you know, to be fair, they were trying to they were trying to bolster that by buying up Harry's, that would have been another razor brands. Uh, but um, that didn't happen. But it's still a big bet on on razor blades, um, cream, razor blades, cream, gel. So it's really the shaving, it's really a shaving company is what we're talking. So looking at this uh, value line, as far as financial strength, value line says it's, it's it gives get a, a B plus. Uh, I had to dig through to find what their rating agencies give it here. Uh, S and P gives it a, a BB, so that's a double B. Moody's uh, Moody's gives it a BA three. Uh, it's worth noting both of those are non-investment grade, uh, so they're speculative ratings, uh, more commonly known as junk. So if you're in the bonds, they're junk bonds. So there's nothing nothing wrong with that. I mean, people can earn a lot of money by, you know, investing in quote unquote junk companies or junk bonds but you just have to know the rating agencies view it as quote junk debt um, it's amazing a lot of people they look up these ratings the bond investors always you know they everything is based on those ratings stock investors don't always look at those but uh, i do i think it's important just to look get, get an opinion from these companies how strong the company is so that's what we're talking here we're talking you know, their, their debt that they have outstanding is rated at junk levels. So uh, insider activity is another thing I think it's important to look at. There's been no buyers of the stock. Uh, the last year here, 2022, uh, there was a director, there was the president of North America. Uh, they sold some stock, we're talking in the $100,000 to $200,000. Uh, the prices were $35 to $37 range. Uh, but, you know, nobody's been buying it the last year or two that I can find. So putting this, you know, where, where do we sort of uh, go from here, putting this all together? Um, I mean, this is a company that, you know, I really want to like because, you know, you look at it, it's, it's in these attractive categories and you figure, you know, all these other big companies are in and they're all making a fortune from, these categories and you say well okay this is a look relatively little company here you know a market cap based on $42 market cap is about two billion dollars so you know it sounds big it's it's not that big it's kind of a small fry compared to all these other big guys that are in it so you know it's something you'd say wow you know that sounds attractive you know maybe because it's smaller it can it can grow and it can do all these things and you know be acquired even but, um, I mean, it's great brands. I mean, they've got, these are the kinds of things they have usually some brand loyalty among these consumer brands. So I wanna like it, but I really, I really can't because, you know, I've been looking at this for years and I feel like every time I look at it, you figure, well, it could be turning the corner and, you know, it, but every time you look at it, it seems like it's it's kind of staying the same or it's getting worse. So, I, you know, you read through, like, you know, the annual reports, the 10Ks, the investor presentations that they give. And what they talk about is they say things like, well, we're going to stabilize this over here. And that's going to be stabilized. And over there, we're going to grow that segment and that brand. And so they talk about stabilizing and growing and so they make it into this rosy, um, you know, this rosy picture. And then what you do, we look at the numbers. The numbers don't look rosy. The numbers look like it's been going down in earnings. It looks like it's really struggling. And that's despite, you know, they've been buying all these, these brands and trying to buy other brands. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it feels like it's one of those deals where you know, it's been like this, it seems for every year I look at it, it kind of looks like the same story. And you say, well, you know, maybe this time is different. 
you know, that's what everybody says. Maybe this time it's different, but, you know, famous last words, right? So I feel like, I feel like looking at this, I don't know, the management that runs it, I, I, don't, I don't know, they're in like a coast mode, no matter what they sort of say, they're, they're sort of coasting along, and I don't know if they're waiting for an offer for a bigger company to come in and buy them for some sort of strategic fit, or, you know, maybe a financial company would buy them, you know, like a hedge, an equity firm or a hedge fund or something, you know, to take them private at some valuation that's going to make them some money. And, you know, I suppose that's possible. I mean, in a perfect world, I guess you get somebody like Procter and Green, Procter and Gamble's Gillette subsidiary would scoop them up and, you know, just create this big giant, you know, owning the razor market. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think as we see the FTC, they wouldn't even let Edgewell buy Harry's. So I don't think Gillette would be able to buy them. You know, in a perfect world, yeah, for business, that, that's how it would be, but that's not the world we live in. You know, the real world is, you know, this antitrust, this anti-competitive uh, blockades, and if something looks like it's going to be creating a, a real monopoly, they'll, they'll be sued to stop them. So... I don't know. It's I mean it's dead maybe rated junk status, but it's not it's not horrible. Uh it's clearly worth something. It's still profitable. Um I don't I don't think it's worth forty two dollars a share. I think it's one of those companies that, you know, if the I mean if the price went down, you know, if we're talking, you know, by half or something and this thing is trading for I don't know. $15 a share, then yeah, it's worth looking at. I mean, I'm not saying I'd even buy it necessarily at that, but it's definitely worth worth a look if it was much cheaper. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely would be worth a look as a speculative type type investment. Um, because let's face it, if, if the stock were to crash that much, um, I don't, you probably won't get any dividends from them because something's going horribly wrong, either with them or the economy or something. But, you know, as for a speculation, yeah, you know, it could be worth a look, I guess, at a lower price. So I'm not giving any financial advice. I'm just giving my honest opinion. Uh, but I think that's the truth about Edgewell Personal Care Company stock. So leave your comments, um, suggestions, and thanks. Have a good day.